All right. So uh, an Aztec society, uh, you'd have the king or high priest at the top. And it really kind of depended on which king uh, you're talking about. Some kings were much more uh, assertive and very much uh, made the decisions themselves. Uh, whereas other kings would be very much influenced by what the high priests would tell them what to do. In many cases, during the long migration, for example, it was the high priest that would decide, well, we've stayed in this area long enough, we need to leave. And so for a good 200 years as they were traveling, uh, it was the high priests who were in large part calling the shots and saying, no, we've been here in this area long enough, we need to head on the move. Now, advising the king, you would have uh, the council, and this would often be family members, and you would have uh, many of these uh, brothers and cousins, etc., would be uh, priests themselves. And so you could have, for example, like a very influential uncle would be the high priest and would, you know, be dominating a younger king who had just taken the throne. Uh, and so you very much had uh, on a case-by-case -case basis, who would have more decision-making power, the, the kings or the priests. The nobility, of course, these are all descendants from various uh, higher-born parts of Aztec society. Uh, this is a smaller uh, subsection of Aztec society. Uh, you have uh, merchants and artisans uh, next, and then at the bottom you have your, your commoners and, and your farmers. And then below that, you would have your, your slaves taken from other cultures. So the upper class was the uh, Papilton. Uh, these would be your nobility, high-ranking warriors, high-ranking priests. In the middle, uh, you had the Macaholton. And these would be your, your artisans and, and people, skilled, skilled people. They were still commoners. You had a, a significant divide between... Uh, the nobility and the commoners. And then the Mayakes at the bottom, uh, these would be the peasants, and then below that, the Tilkotin, the, the slaves. And so this uh, art shows very well, right? Your priests, your warriors, your nobles. And it would have been visually very easy to see, you know, the difference. You have uh, feathers and jewelry and you know gold uh, fancy clothing you have your your warriors uh, eagle warriors jazz jaguar warriors uh, very obvious visually the divide between uh, your upper nobility and your lower commoners your commoners uh, would be uh, dressed very simply uh, and not wearing much in the way of ornamentation So just more uh, visualization of, of the differences in the different groups, right? So your Aztec kings would rule the empire, and they lived in utter luxury. They would get from their tributes all sorts of food and jewelry and beautiful art and feathers and everything. And so as far as living in, in the ancient world goes, uh, being an Aztec king was pretty good gig. Nobles lived really well also um and they did most of the work right so these are your tax collectors your judges these are the ones you know running society more directly now your artisans uh would be quite comfortable uh, if you can make beautiful crafts that the upper society the nobility would like you could you know live well farmers uh in the aztec society would have been healthier uh, than most in Europe or in Japan, for example. Uh, they ate better, uh, but very simple life, living in, in huts and, and working hard every day. Now, the slaves, uh, this is not a fun place to be, right? Forced labor, a lot of manual labor, uh, all the temples and things you see, you know, the aqueducts, the causeways, all of those big work projects would have been built with slave labor. And these slaves would have been taken from uh, prisoners of war. Uh, of course, working manual labor like that uh, beats